In this video, we are going to prove that the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta is equal to one. This is a very important limit in calculus as it will help you find the limit of other trig ratios. It is assumed that you already have an understanding of the unit circle as well as right triangle trigonometry before watching this video. We begin with what we already know. Recall the unit circle. So I'm just going to draw a unit circle. Now I'm going to draw a positive angle in quadrant one and I'm going to call that angle theta. And now from the terminal point of the angle theta to the terminal point of the angle zero, I'm just going to draw a line. Notice that I have a triangle and a sector, which is a segment of a circle. Since we are on the unit circle, we know that the radius is one. We also know that the distance from the center of the circle to any point on the circle is one. So I know that here, the length of this side is one and here, the length of this side is one. Now I'm going to draw a straight line up from the terminal point of the angle zero. And from the terminal point of the angle theta, I'm going to extend the line so that the two lines meet. Notice that we now have a bigger triangle. I am going to call the height of the smaller triangle H1, and I'm going to call the height of the bigger triangle H2. Notice that this dotted line creates a 90 degree angle, and the bigger triangle also has a 90 degree angle. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to draw the smaller triangle, the sector, and the bigger triangle separately. So if I pull each one out, here's the smaller triangle. And my angle theta. I'm going to go ahead and draw the height, H1, my 90 degree angle. And I know that this side is one. I also know that this side is one. Next, I'm going to draw the sector, which includes the smaller triangle, but it has this extra wedge here. So here's the sector. and my angle theta, and I know that this side is one and this side is one. Now I'm going to draw the bigger triangle. So here's the bigger triangle. And my angle theta. And I know that this side is one, and I know that the height we call H2. Now I'm going to let B represent the base of the two triangles, and I'm going to let R represent the radius of the sector. So let's let B equal 
the base. And I'm going to let R equal the radius. Now let us find H1 and H2. So for the smaller triangle, so I'm going to let ST stand for smaller triangle. I know that sine of theta is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. So opposite of the angle theta is H1. So sine of theta is equal to H1 over the hypotenuse, which is 1. So I see that sine theta is equal to H1. For the bigger triangle, I'll let BT represent bigger triangle. I know that tan of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. So tangent of theta is equal to, opposite of the angle theta is H2, so that's going to be H2, and adjacent to the angle theta is 1, so that's H2 over 1. So I see that tan theta is equal to H2. Now let us compare the area of the smaller triangle, the sector, and the bigger triangle. Clearly, we see that the area of the smaller triangle will be smaller than the area of the sector. And the area of the sector will be smaller than the area of the bigger triangle. So, I know that area of smaller triangle is less than area of sector. I'll let S represent sector. And the area of the sector is less than the area of the bigger triangle. Now, what is the area of a triangle? Well, we know that the area of a triangle is equal to one half the base times the height which in this case we call H1. So that's less than the area of a sector, which is 1 half R squared theta. It is important to note that theta is in radians. So in radians. Always remember that anytime you are working with a sector to be sure that your angle is given in radians. One of the reasons is because think about the area of a circle. The area of a circle is equal to pi r squared, which is an angle that is given in radians. A sector is just a segment of a circle. Thus, the area of a sector is just a fraction of the area of a circle. Now we know that the area of the sector is less than the area of the bigger triangle, which is also 1 half base times height, which in our case is H2. So now let's come back over here. One half the base, which is one, times the height, which is sine theta. So this will be one half times one times sine theta. And that's less than one half times r, which is one squared theta. And that's less than one half the base, which is 1, times h2, which is tan theta. So this comes to sine theta over 2, and that's less than theta over 2, 
and that's less than tan theta over 2. Now this inequality is true for positive theta in the first quadrant. That means that as we approach 0, we are approaching from the right. However, we also want to know what happens as we approach 0 from the left. Because in order for the limit as theta approaches 0 to exist, the left-hand limit must equal the right-hand limit. So if you take the absolute value of the inequality, it will hold true for negative theta in the fourth quadrant. Because if I were to draw the triangles and the sector using negative theta, there would be symmetry about the horizontal axis. So the distances will be the same for negative theta as they are for positive theta. Although sine of theta and tangent of theta will have negative values in the fourth quadrant, area is always positive. So we can take the absolute value of the inequality Now I'm going to multiply through by 2, and I'm also going to rewrite tan theta as sine theta over cosine theta. So this becomes the absolute value of sine theta is less than the absolute value of theta, and that is less than the absolute value of sine theta over cosine theta. Now I'm going to divide everything through by the absolute value of sine theta. So this becomes 1 is less than the absolute value of theta over sine theta. And that's less than the absolute value of 1 over cosine theta. Because sine theta will cancel with sine theta. Now we are going to take the reciprocals which will reverse the inequality. So we know that the reciprocal of 1 over 1 is 1 over 1, which is just 1. So I'm going to write 1 and we flip the inequality and the reciprocal of theta over sine theta is sine theta over theta. So this will be sine theta over theta, all in the absolute value, and that will be greater than the reciprocal of 1 over cosine theta, so that's going to be the absolute value of cosine theta. Now, notice that if I were to plug in negative theta, we would get sine of negative theta over negative theta, which is equal to negative sine of theta over negative theta. We can do that because sine is an odd function, so we can pull out the negative sign here. And two negatives make a positive, so that's going to be sine theta over theta. So whether we have positive theta or negative theta, sine theta over theta will always be positive. And for cosine theta, we know that cosine of negative theta is just equal to cosine of theta because cosine is an even function. So we know that we can just simply disregard the negative sign. So we can just remove the absolute value. So 1 is greater than sine theta over theta, and sine theta over theta is greater than cosine of theta. Now, let us take the limit as theta approaches 0 of 1, and the limit as theta approaches 0 of cosine of theta. 
So the limit as theta approaches zero of one is one. And the limit as theta approaches zero of cosine of theta is equal to cosine of zero, which is equal to one. Notice that sine of theta is between one and cosine of theta. And if the limit as theta approaches zero of one is one, and the limit as theta approaches zero of cosine of theta is one, then the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta must also equal to one because it's in between these two functions. We also know this by the squeeze theorem. The squeeze theorem goes something like this. So if f of x is less than or equal to h of x, and h of x is less than or equal to g of x for all x, and if the limit as x approaches c of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches c of g of x is equal to some number l, then the limit as x approaches c of h of x must equal to l. Thus, we know that the limit as theta approaches zero of sine theta over theta must also equal to one. So thus, the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta is equal to one. And hence, proved. Also, if you would like to see the graph, it looks something like this. I am only going to show the graph from negative pi to pi. So here is pi over two, and here is pi. Here's negative pi over two, and here's negative pi. Here is one and negative one. And the graph of y equal one is just a line, horizontal line. So here is y equal one. And the graph of cosine of theta is going to go like this. It's going to come down here and come around like this. And for sine theta over theta, it's going to come around like this. So the second graph is y equal cosine theta. And this last one here that I drew is y equal sine theta over theta. We see that y equal sine theta over theta is between the graph of y equal cosine theta and y equals one. And as we approach zero, everything converges to one. And that is how you prove the limit as theta goes to zero of sine theta over theta is equal to one. Thank you for watching and always remember that you are awesome.